history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. And that breaking news is tragedy right in the middle of the busy evening commute, a time when so many of our loved ones are on the roads. Three people killed in a car crash in northwest Harris County. Here's what we're hearing initially from the scene. It was two adults and one child who died in that crash. Several more are injured. Here's a look at where it happened. Antoine Drive near Beltway 8. Our Taisha Walker just arrived within the last 30 minutes. Taisha? And you know, within that short time that I've been out here, several people have mentioned just how dangerous this intersection is. Take a look at the aftermath of that deadly accident. You can see the silver car. The front part is just mangled. And if we pan over to the right, you could see that is the second vehicle. It appears to be a van. That van we know caught on fire after the impact. We have learned that three people are dead as a result of this accident. Deputies tell us that it was two adults and a child. Constable Mark Herman with Precinct 4 in Harris County says three more were taken to a hospital. They're currently in critical condition after they were thrown out of their vehicle after that impact. We know that it was an adult and two children, according to deputies. I just spoke with a man who heard the crash and ran over to help. He tells me that one of those vehicles ran a red light. Take a listen. We heard it first, and then we ran outside and seen that two vehicles collided and one exploded. Van that had a couple people in it that we couldn't get to, and the two boys that was in the civil car, we got them out. But there was a young lady that was tossed from the van into the middle of the median. And that man tells me he feels remorse because he wasn't able to get the other three people out of that van that you see that caught on fire. We know that the uh, district attorney's office, they have representatives out here on scene. Investigators are out here trying to piece together to see which of these two vehicles was at fault. They're asking if you don't have to be in this area to try to avoid it and do expect some traffic on the feeder road. Putting live in Northwest Harris County, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Taisha. Now to the weather and the return of winter here in Texas. Last night at this time, we were sitting at a spring-like 70 degrees. Right now, 24 hours later, our temperatures have dipped to the mid-40s. And you think it's chilly here? Check out North Texas tonight. Snow falling in Young County. That's about 90 miles northwest of Fort Worth. Today, people there saw several inches of snow. We're here now in the Severe Weather Center with Chief yep. Meteorologist Frank Billingsley, and we're not done yet. Yeah, and there's this possibility of a burst of snow, at least in our area, so really? we'll talk about that. I know, yeah. look at this temperature change. 
change. The last 24 hours, we have dropped 27, 28, 29, 30 degrees from what we were at this time last night. So it is really plunged. Triangle Energy Camera, and you'll notice not just the mid 40s, but look at those feels like numbers because of the wind chill. 38, 50 doesn't really matter until you get below 50. We're at 36 in Conroe, and 37 is the feels like number in Huntsville. So it's cold and it's cloudy, and those winds are anywhere between 10 and 15 miles an hour. Exact track radar for us is pretty quiet. There's some tornado watches back out here in Mississippi and Alabama. There's that snow we were talking about. Look at that north of Dallas. Moves right through the Denton area, looks like. And this, see that right down in Mexico? That's what we're watching for later tonight. So I'm going to put our future cast on here. It initializes that pretty well. I'll put some pause points. It's going to race along, and it's moving so quickly, it's not going to be able to do much. But you'll notice the printout from around San Antonio up toward the College Station area. Continues toward Buffalo, moves toward Crockett, even into northern Grimes County. Not out of the realm of possibility. This is an early morning, midnight to 3 in the morning event, if anything. 30% chance of a little snow. And then it's out of here. So as we go into Thursday, it's pretty quiet. So we'll talk more about that wintry burst. Showers are out of here by morning, so the commute should be in pretty good shape. It's just going to be really cold. We don't get warm until the weekend. I'll have the forecast for that straight ahead. Dominique? Looking forward to it, Frank. Thanks. Only on two tonight, dangerous road conditions. A Channel 2 viewer told us about a roadway in Liberty County that is causing big problems there for drivers. And there's video. It shows a pothole mm -hmm. so large that cars, trucks, even school buses have to maneuver around it just to get by. Channel 2's Bill Barajas is live in that community, Plum Grove, where drivers are having to get creative to get where they're going. Bill. Well, it's pothole after pothole here in a very high trafficked area, making it tough on drivers. I want to show you some of the issues here. You can see the potholes there just behind me. Residents also telling me they're having to take matters into their own hands by trying to fill some of these potholes with asphalt and brick. You see evidence of that there. This is something they say they've been dealing with for the past three years. This plague of potholes can only be described as bumpy, dangerous, and difficult to maneuver. Well, as you can hear, my, the suspension on these vehicles, is taking, it takes a toll on the suspension on the vehicles. The potholes, which folks say have been an issue since Hurricane Harvey, are located on Plum Grove Road. Cars, trucks, even school buses all have the same problem. This is not safe. You have to pick your way through the roads, through the potholes, essentially. Um, and so there's people that are swerving over to the other side of the road to go around a pothole, which is understandable because it tears up your car. Danny Dorch does his best to avoid this area. He says this is the first time in six months he's attempted to use it. Dorch believes the conditions here have been caused by the type of vehicles that use this road. The big trucks are going to wear your roads out. You take a heavy loaded truck down a small country road and it's going to eventually put potholes in the road. Drivers like Juan Santana say they've contacted the city and the county about the issue, but can't seem to get a clear answer as to who's responsible. They go between them both, and that's how they leave that, and so now the people, we have to suffer. The mayor of Plum Grove said she's tried to have the issue fixed, but has been ignored by Precinct 3 County Commissioner James Reeves. In a statement, she said the city has signed a interlocal agreement with Liberty County to share the financial responsibilities of maintaining our roads. We have requested material for the roads on dozens of occasions since 2017, as we, the city, will provide the equipment and labor. And we contacted that Liberty County Commissioner James Reeve by phone and by email, but have not heard back from him. We also went by his office and we're told he was out for the day. We're hoping to hear back from him. When we do, we will let you know. Live from Plum Grove, Bill Barajas, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Bill, thank you. We learned about that dangerous roadway from a Channel 2 viewer. If you have a story you think we should pursue, call 713-223-TIPS. You can also email us at storyideas at kprc.com. We are following breaking news on the Northwest side. It's a deadly apartment fire. Our Phil Archer is at the scene and Phil learned it was an elderly woman who died. And we want to go back to Phil live. He's at the Garden City Apartments on West Montgomery Road near West Gulf Bank. Phil. Yeah, what's going on behind me right now is the investigation underway to determine exactly how that lady died. Houston firefighters telling us they arrived here about 2.45 this afternoon to find a ground floor apartment on fire. They kicked in the door, got inside, and found the woman who lived there alone lying on the couch. The couch was burning. They carried her outside and pretty quickly determined that she was dead, that she had passed away. 
relatives saying are identifying her as Verma Moore, 67 years old. They say she had a history of health problems, including a series of strokes, and that she was a smoker as well. So it is possible that the cause of the fire is accidental, but they are not taking any chances with that. We have homicide investigators on the scene, arson investigators are here, and they are going to be here until they have a little clearer idea of how and why Mrs. Moore died. Reporting live in Northwest Houston, I'm Phil Archer, KPRC Channel 2 News. A major brawl caught on camera at a Texas Southern women's basketball game has now led to several suspensions of players and managers. The fight broke out Monday night in Montgomery, Alabama, where TSU was facing off against Alabama State. This is one angle of what happened that has surfaced now on social media. Following an investigation into this altercation, the Southwestern Athletic Conference has announced the suspension of five players from TSU, along with five players and two managers from Alabama State. In addition to these suspensions, the conference has also fined both schools $5,000. Texas Southern has since responded to the punishment, saying in part, quote, while the timing of the suspensions is unfortunate, our student athletes will take ownership of their decisions. A historic day in Washington has come to an end after the Senate voted to acquit President Donald Trump of two articles of impeachment. The first article charged the president with abusing power by pressuring Ukraine to investigate Democratic rival Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. The vote on that first article was 52 to 48 for acquittal. The president also charged with obstruction of justice of Congress, rather, after the administration's defiance of the House requests for testimony. That vote was 53 to 47, also for acquittal. After the vote, President Trump tweeted that he will speak to the nation about his acquittal tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Houston time. Some sad breaking news out of Hollywood tonight. You might have just seen this on NBC Nightly News. Legendary actor Kirk Douglas has died. He was 103 years old. Douglas's movie career spanned more than 60 years and included movies like Spartacus and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. He won an honorary Oscar in 1996 and was even awarded the Presidential Medal of Freeman by then President Jimmy Carter in 1981. All right, bundle up. We have not only the cold, cloudy conditions, but an overnight shower or two a possibility. We'll check on that future cast. 30s tomorrow morning, so it's going to be a chilly wake up, no question about it. And it stays cold until the weekend. Forecast straight ahead, Randy. All right, Frank, NBA trade deadline is tomorrow at 2 o'clock. The Rockets have one deal done trading Clint Capella for Robert Covington. Is there another move on the way from GM Daryl Morey? Details ahead in sports. And young athletes raise money to buy team shirts, but end up brokenhearted. How can you do this to kids? And how can you do this to an organization? We don't have money. They're not stealing for us as adult, from us as adults. They're stealing from these kids. The shirts misprinted or blank. Others never delivered at all. That was then. This is now. Our Bill Spencer hands out their brand new t-shirts next on Channel 2 News at 6.